one of the Masonic writers frequently cited in some of the previous videos as being an expert on Masonic affairs, has been Albert Pike, the sovereign grand commander of the southern jurisdiction of the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry from 1859 to his death in 1891. So it might be helpful to know a little about his past. He has been described by fellow Masons in a rather flattering manner. Carl Claudy has written this. Pike was, one of the greatest geniuses Freemasonry has ever known. He was, a teacher of the hidden truths of Freemasonry. Manley P. Hall has written. Albert Pike, who has gathered ample evidence of the excellence of the doctrines promulgated by the mysteries. And Dr. Robert Watts, a fellow 33rd degree Mason, made some very complimentary comments about him as well. He said that he was. The world's greatest Masonic scholar. And he praised. The tremendous genius of Albert Pike. Perhaps Pike's finest accomplishment for the Masonic cause was his book entitled, Morals and Dogma, published in 1871 by the Supreme Council of the 33rd Degree, for the Southern Jurisdiction of the United States. There is some disagreement as to whether or not this book is to be read by all Masons seeking higher degrees inside the Masonic Order. This author was told by members of the Masons in Tucson in 1985 that the book was still given to all Masons for their perusal. However, Rex Hutchins, a 32nd degree Mason, and the author who wrote a new book entitled, A Bridge to Light for the Masons in 1988, said this in his book. Morals and Dogma was traditionally given to the candidate as a gift upon his receipt of the 14th degree. His use of the word was implies that it is no longer given to the Masonic candidate. However, Mr. Hutchins had words of praise for it. He wrote. Contained within its pages are some of the most profound teachings of the right. Henry Clausen, one of Mr. Pike's successors as Sovereign Grand Commander of the Masons, also praised his book. An inspired and classical compilation of Pike's own research. Other Masonic scholars who have come after him have revered his name. This comment came from Albert Mackey. His standing as a Masonic author and historian was most distinguished, and his untiring zeal was without a parallel. The Masonic Order as a body must have thought highly of Mr. Pike as well, because they permitted him to rewrite the Scottish Rite rituals. But perhaps the greatest example of the influence of this man was reported by General Gordon Granger, who had an occasion to meet with both Mr. Pike and then-President Andrew Johnson, a fellow Mason. This event occurred in March of 1867, and was later testified to by General Granger in front of the House Judiciary Committee. They were investigating charges that President Johnson should be impeached, and they felt that the General's recollections of that meeting might be helpful. The General told the committee. They talked a great deal about masonry more about that than anything else. And from what they talked about between them, I gathered that he, meaning Pike, was the superior of the president in masonry. I understood from the conversation that the president was his subordinate in masonry. That was all there was to it. But that wasn't all there was to it. On June 20, 1867, the president received a delegation of Scottish Rite officials in his bedroom at the White House, where he received the fourth through the 32nd degrees of the Scottish Rite. But the important revelation is that the general had testified that the President of the United States was the subordinate to Albert Pike in Masonry. And the importance of that fact can be gathered from the oath the initiate takes during the third degree, called the Master Mason's degree, inside the Blue Lodge. The initiate takes the following oath. Emphasis by author, furthermore, I do promise and swear that I will obey all regular signs, summonses, or tokens given, handed out, sent, or thrown to me from the hand of a brother master mason, or from the body of a just and lawfully constituted lodge of such. The capitalized words when taken together read. I do promise that I will obey all summonses given to me from the hand of a brother master mason. That means that the President of the United States had to take orders from Albert Pike, should he order him to do so. The significance of that startling proposition will become more evident as additional evidence of just what Mr. Pike believed in is presented in further videos in this channel. There is a hierarchy in the United States. And presidents who are Masons take orders from other Masons. Before I continue the video, please smash that like button for me. Thank you. The Masons have wrapped their initiation ceremony around a legend involving an individual named Hiram Abiff. The Masons have constructed this legend themselves from two brief references to him in the Bible. This information on Hiram comes from Mackey's Encyclopedia. When King Solomon was about to build a temple to Jehovah, called Solomon's Temple, the difficulty of obtaining skillful workmen to superintend and to execute the architectural part of the undertaking was such that he found it necessary to request of his friend and ally, Hiram, King of Tyre, the use of some of his most able builders. Hiram, the king, willingly complied with his request and dispatched Hiram out of Tyre. 
The Bible, in the first book of Kings 713, says that Hiram Abif was a widow's son and was filled with wisdom and understanding. The Masons claim that Hiram Abif was a master Mason and possessed the secrets of the degree, secrets that he could not share with his fellow workers. The reason for that was because the other workers at the temple were apprentice Masons, not entitled to a share of the secrets of the master Mason. Fifteen fellow craft seeing the temple about to be completed and being desirous of obtaining the secrets of a master mason, whereby they might travel into foreign countries, work and receive master's wages, entered into a horrid conspiracy to extort the secrets from the master, or take his life. Twelve of them recanted, the other three, however persisted in their murderous design. According to the legend, Hiram Abif was slain by these three ruffians at high twelve, because he refused to share the secrets. The three ruffians were named Jubela, Jubelo, and Jubalum. The Masons admit that the death of Hiram is a purely symbolic event. Therefore, the student must look elsewhere for an explanation of what his symbolic death means. In addition, they further admit that the story is not based completely on the two brief mentions of Hiram in the Bible. Thus the biblical account of the story of Hiram is occasionally at variance with the legend as told in Masonic literature. The remaining parts of the legend of Hiram Abif are not pertinent to this study, so they will not be discussed here. However, it will be helpful for further discussion in later videos for the following comments to be added at this juncture. Rex Hutchins, a 32nd degree mason, has placed an important piece into the puzzle in his book entitled, A Bridge to Light. He gives his readers this explanation as to what the symbolic death of Hiram means. What are the symbolic meanings of the attacks upon Hiram? Hiram is first accosted at the south gate of the temple, where the instrument of the attack is the rule. In Greek, the word for a rule whether a measuring instrument or a code of conduct, is canon. Thus we see the bureaucracy of the early church establishing the canon law to regulate conduct. This law was to be obeyed with unquestioned loyalty, hence it is an apt symbol of the suppression of freedom of speech, which might question the divinity and justice of these laws, therefore Hiram, with the rule, is struck where the organs of speech are. The instrument of attack at the west gate of the temple was the square, it represents the merger of civil and religious power, intending to control man's emotions, telling him not only what he can do, but also what he can believe. Thus Hiram is struck near the heart, the traditional seat of the affections. The setting mall, an instrument of brute force, is a fitting symbol of the blind, unreasoning mob. It fears the force of the intellect and seeks the destruction of the products of the mind. Hiram is killed at the east gate by a blow to the head, the seat of the intellect. So Mr. Hutchins is telling his reader that the ruffians that killed Hiram Abif were not individuals seeking the secrets of masonry from Hiram, the master mason, but were concealed symbols of the church, the church and the state, and the forces fearing the power of man's reason. This is an amazing revelation. It is rare that the masons share the exact interpretation of their secrets as they have done in this instance. Remember that the contents of Mr. Hutchins' book have been approved by the Supreme Council of the 33rd degree of the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry. This explanation has official sanction. They want us to know that the enemies of the Masons are the church, the state, and opposition to man's reason. In another part of his book, Mr. Hutchins provides the reader with another explanation of the symbols. This additional explanation of the true meaning of the symbols is strikingly similar to the first. The master Hiram is the symbol of intelligence, liberty and truth, and the assassins are the symbols of tyranny, ignorance and intolerance or fanaticism. So he equates the church and the state with tyranny, ignorance, intolerance and fanaticism. As will be shown in the upcoming videos, the Masons have pledged themselves to avenge the death of Hiram. They have pledged themselves to destroy the state and the church. So, the real purpose of the Masons has been discovered. The Masons are not a philanthropic organization out to assist men to better themselves. They have a hidden purpose. And it takes but a little fortitude to discover what that purpose is. Their purpose is to destroy organized religion and the state, just like the Illuminati and the Communist Party. They have said so in their own literature. There can be no doubt. Additional evidence that the above interpretation of Mr. Hutchins' comments is correct will follow. This was everything inside me channel. Please like, drop a comment, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell too. Thanks for watching till the end. Stay safe and healthy.